all right so let me continue with this uh, with this with this discussion about marty's theorem okay which is uh, which is basically uh, 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 an analog of montel's theorem except that uh, you are working with uh, not with analytic functions but with meromorphic functions okay so uh, so let's uh, let's look at uh, let's again look at the statement um, uh, so you have uh, uh, so you have this domain d uh, in the complex plane uh, and uh, uh, you have this family script f of meromorphic functions on d so the script md is the uh, you know uh, it is the set of meromorphic functions on d and mind you we are considering these as continuous functions from d into the extended complex plane okay so uh, uh, the, the you are able to do that because uh, uh, a meromorphic function normally at a at a point which is a pole it's it's uh, it goes to infinity okay uh, but then you allow the value infinity and you declare the value at the pole to be infinity so it becomes continuous so the this set of meromorphic functions is <coughs> a subset of this uh, the, this set of continuous functions from d to uh, the external complex plane cu in infinity uh, which as a metric space <coughs> uh, uh, given the spherical metric we think of as the just the riemann sphere okay with infinity corresponding to the north pole right and so you have this family uh, script f of meromorphic functions uh, you can either use the word collection or family or subset whichever that whichever uh, you, you you prefer but the point is uh, when is this family compact so so in this case you know <coughs> uh, uh, normally uh, 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 or i i should uh, since the word normal is used technically i should say usually uh, uh, compactness is equal is equivalent to sequential compactness and then that it means that you know saying something is compact is the same as saying that every sequence has a convergent subsequence so uh, if you want to say that the family script f is sequentially i mean is compact you will like to you would like to say it's uh, sequentially compact <coughs> if you want to say it's compact and uh, then you would like to which means that you know given any sequence of uh, functions in this family you are able to extract a subsequence which converges uh, now uh, what kind of convergence uh, if we are uh, usually the convergence that we worry about is the uh, is is uniform convergence but of course uh, in the case in the case of analytic functions the meromorphic functions you will you won't get uniform convergence on the whole domain you will get only uniform convergence on compacta uh, you will get only uniform convergence on compact subsets and that's called normal convergence okay so uh, in other words, um, the compactness of the family F is thought of as uh, uh, normal sequential compactness, which means that every sequence in F admits a subsequence that converges uniformly on compact subsets of the domain. Okay, so this is what compactness for us means. And uh, Marty's theorem says that this is the same as uh, the uh, the family of spherical derivatives of F, namely you take. Uh, for each small f in script f you take its spherical derivative f hash of f hash small f hash and you get this family script f hash you this is the family of spherical derivatives and and that should be normally uniformly bounded uh, uh, which means that it is uniformly bounded on compact sets so uh, in in some sense uh, uh, boundedness of uh, derivatives is giving you is, is is equivalent to compactness i mean if you want to say it in a nutshell boundedness of derivatives is equivalent to compactness okay and uh, uh, so there are uh, there are a couple of aspects that that i want to stress uh, uh, between this and the original montel theorem uh, see the original montel theorem was for analytic functions okay so you took instead of taking a family of uh, meromorphic functions as we have done now if you had taken analytic functions okay then uh, uh, we would have put the condition that the family is uniformly bounded the family itself is uniformly bounded okay and uh, the uh, and there the uniform boundedness uh, uh, of the family uh, on compact subsets that would be equivalent to the family being normally sequentially compact that is the usual montel theorem okay and uh, the way we work there is uh, you have the uniform bound if you if you restrict to a compact set 
you have uniform boundedness of the family okay uh, then uh, from the uniform boundedness of the family you derive equicontinuity because from the uniform boundedness of the family you get uniform boundedness of the derivatives and that is because of the fact that the, the derivatives are expressed in terms of the original functions you sh using the Cauchy integral formula and you can make an estimation there are the Cauchy estimates. So the uniform boundedness of the family on a compact subset will give rise to uniform boundedness of the derivatives on a compact subset and uniform boundedness of the derivatives always gives rise to equicontinuity. So you get along with uniform boundedness uh, on a compact subset you get equicontinuity for free if you are looking at analytic functions okay. But you see Marty's theorem is slightly different what is happening is uh, Whereas in Montel's theorem uniform boundedness on compact subsets of the family is equivalent to the family being normally sequentially compact. In Marty's theorem it is not uniform boundedness on compact normal uniform boundedness of the family but it is actually normal uniform boundedness of the spherical derivatives okay. So uh, you move from the family uh, in some sense you move from the boundedness of the family to the boundedness of the derivatives that is the that is the switch okay and the point is that uh, in in a sense this is stronger than the uh, original uh, Montel theorem because in the original Montel theorem uh, uh, if you know uh, uh, if you are if you are looking at a family of uh, analytic functions and suppose you know that their derivatives are uh, uniform normally uniformly bounded suppose I am not given that the family itself is uniformly bounded but suppose I am given just the derivatives are normally uniformly bounded okay. Then what happens is if the usual derivatives are normally uniformly bounded then it also happens that the spherical derivatives are normally uniformly bounded because of this reason okay. Because you see the uh, if you if you the, 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 the spherical derivatives are bounded by 2 times the bound for the normal derivatives the usual derivatives. So if the usual derivatives are bounded okay then the spherical derivatives are bounded. So if you take a family of analytic functions on a domain such that the usual derivatives are all uniformly bounded on compact subsets that is normally uniformly bounded then also you will get uh, uh, no, uh, you know you will get a normal sequential compactness okay uh, because of Marty's theorem. But the only thing is that now you could have uh, you know uh, the, the uh, because you are considering these as meromorphic functions you could have the extreme case that all these analytic functions uh, go to infinity okay and by that I mean they go to the function which is uh, infinity on all points of the domain which is also considered as a continuous function okay and mind you for such for that function the, the, the spherical derivative is 0 because it is a constant function okay. So uh, uh, now what I want to say is uh, so this is so this is one aspect that uh, when you move from Montel's theorem to Marty's theorem you are actually moving from uniform boundedness uh, on compact subsets of the family of functions to the uniform boundedness of the derivatives okay uh, and because you are worrying about meromorphic functions usual derivatives will not work uh, for example at poles so you will have to look at the spherical derivatives okay now that is one aspect now the here is another important aspect see uh, if you you know that these uh, these Montel's theorem uh, for example is actually uh, yeah, a, a deeper version or an uh, is an application of the Arzela Ascoli theorem okay and what is the philosophy of the original what is the philosophy of the original Arzela Ascoli theorem the philosophy is that if you want to say a family of functions is compact which is the same as saying that is sequentially compact namely you want to extract a convergence of sequence from any given sequence see you will have to put the conditions of the family being equicontinuous and uniformly bounded that is why the uh, Arzela Ascoli theorem is often uh, referred to as uniform boundedness principle okay. So you need uniform boundedness plus you need uh, equicontinuity together to give you uh, sequential compactness alright. If you are working with analytic functions uniform boundedness is enough okay because equicontinuity will come out as a, a, a immediately it will come out for free because you have the Cauchy integral formula okay. Now uh, in, in the case of Marty's theorem there is a slight uh, there is a slight uh, uh, advantage the advantage is that if you see I have 
if I if I look at the if I look at it in one direction, that is, why is it that the uniform boundedness, normal uniform boundedness of derivatives should give me a sequence normal sequential compactness? Okay, what you can guess immediately is that always boundedness of the derivatives gives gives rise to equicontinuity. Okay, it always gives rise to equicontinuity. So even on a compact set if you want to extract a convergent subsequence from a given sequence okay you would like to apply arzela ascoli theorem so what is missing what is missing is uniform boundedness okay because if you want to apply arzela ascoli theorem you need uniform boundedness together with equicontinuity so that you can extract from any given sequence as convergence of sequence so if i restrict to a compact set what i if i assume that the derivative spherical derivatives are bounded okay i can expect only equicontinuity okay i will not get the i will get equicontinuity of the given family of functions but i cannot get i don't seem to be getting the uniform boundedness of the family okay but here is where the beautiful thing is you don't need any uniform boundedness okay the reason is because the values are being taken in a compact matrix space okay see the values are being taken as far as meromorphic functions are concerned where are the values being taken the values are being taken in the extended complex plane extended complex plane mind you uh, is identified with the riemann sphere and it's a compact matrix space okay and you know a compact matrix space is of course bounded it's uh, it's totally bounded it's bounded okay uh, it's complete okay so uh, there is no there's no, there is no unboundedness phenomena that's going to occur in a compact matrix space okay so this uniform boundedness condition is not necessary that's the whole point okay so what i want to say is that your arzela ascoli theorem uh, in in the arzela ascoli theorem okay we were looking at functions continuous functions uh, either real or complex valued on a compact matrix space okay now i am saying uh, and there for sequential compactness of a family of functions you needed both uniform boundedness and equicontinuity but if i instead of looking at real or complex valued functions suppose i was looking at functions with values in a compact matrix space okay that is the change i am making you try to look at functions defined on a compact matrix space and taking values in another compact matrix space the target is not real numbers or complex numbers but the target is another compact matrix space then because the target is already compact this uniform boundedness is not needed just equicontinuity is enough and it is equivalent to uh, sequential compactness that is the whole point that is the whole point okay so what i want to tell you is that when you go to marty's theorem okay you switch to the uniform boundedness of the derivatives and you don't care about <coughs> the boundedness of the original family of functions locally that's because now the functions are already taking values in a compact matrix space and you don't have to worry about it okay so we uh, so let me uh, so let me you know explain the proof uh, 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 so uh, uh, whatever i have circled here is to uh, uh, to tell you that uh, what this tells you is that if the uh, if the uh, family of derivatives of uh, uh, a collection of a family of analytic functions functions is is uniformly bounded then so is the family of spherical derivatives so the boundedness of the ordinary derivatives implies boundedness of spherical derivatives okay so uh, uh, that's something that i'm i'm writing here um, i think uh, i've i've cramped it a little bit so let me get rid of this lemma and rewrite it later uh, so oops fine so what i'll uh, what i'll do is uh, i'll <coughs> uh, uh, i'll try to give you the proof of this uh, so let's go 
let us go in one direction. Uh, uh, so, <coughs> so, let me again reiterate uh, the Azel Haskell theorem is valid okay, uh, in the in the sense that uh, sequential compactness is same as equicontinuity without worrying about uniform boundedness. If you are looking at functions which are taking values in continuous functions with values in a compact metric space okay if that is if you replace real and complex numbers by a compact metric space right that is the whole point. So, just equicontinuity is enough right and I will try to um, yeah, <coughs> instead of trying to prove a theorem in that generality I will even explain to you how you can get the sequential compactness. So, what you do is uh, so let us let us start this way uh, suppose uh, 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 so, so maybe I will use okay. So, suppose f is suppose f hash is normally uniformly bounded. suppose it is normally uniformly bounded what do I have to show I have to show that it is normally sequentially compact that means uh, you will have to pick up uh, given any uh, uh, sequence uh, in the in the family script f you have to show that there is a convergent subsequence right uh, convergent in convergence in the sense of normal convergence that is convergence on compact subsets. So, that is what I have to do we need to so let me write that down we need to show show that any sequence f1 f2 and so on uh, admits this sequence in of course in <coughs> in uh, i should not say uh, uh, well when i put subset uh, this is i'm not writing this uh, sequence as a set okay because there could be repetitions in a sequence okay so this is by this notation uh, let, let me put uh, let me put belongs to okay. So, it is I mean that f1 f2 etc is a sequence in f uh, uh, you have to show that any sequence admits a convergence subsequence subsequence and of course, uh, it should be a normally convergent subsequence that is something that converges on uh, uh, compact subsets uniformly on compact and of course, on compact subsets the convergence is uniform right. So, uniform convergence uh, so now, uh, so how do I go about this. So, as usual the uh, the moment uh, usually if you have uh, boundedness of the derivatives the first thing that you do is you get uh, the equicontinuity of the family okay that is always uh, always you should remember as a philosophy boundedness of the derivatives is a strong condition to imply that will imply equicontinuity of the original family. So, so what you do is that so that is what I am going to demonstrate we will we'll demonstrate that uh, this family script f is equicontinuous okay. So, uh, we will show script f is is equicontinuous. How do I do that you check equicontinuity at every point. So, what you do is uh, fix uh, fix uh, z naught in d and uh, a, a disk uh, uh, a closed disk uh, uh, centered at z naught at z naught uh, in d of uh, sufficiently small radius ok. So, uh, so now you know so this is so the situation is like this. Uh, you have this you have the you have the complex plane and you have this uh, you have some you have this domain d okay and so this is d i'm i'm always trying to draw a bounded domain but it need not be a bounded domain okay uh, because if it's an unbounded domain uh, with i can't show it on a picture uh, so so here is uh, so here is the domain d it is the boundary is this dotted uh, uh, line and what I am having is a point z naught in D and I am choosing a sufficiently small disk uh, such uh, say of radius rho ok uh, rho sufficiently small. So, that the whole closed disk is inside D ok that the open disk uh, with z uh, with center z naught radius rho along with the boundary circle that is also in D ok. And what do I do uh, I, I just uh, so, so I remember that you know my if you take a function f 
small f and script f mind you the function is being now thought of as going into the Riemann sphere okay so it is going into C union infinity and the C union infinity is identified so I put a triple line okay this is identified with the uh, with the Riemann sphere so uh, what is it it is just uh, so this is just S2 the real 2 sphere uh, in, 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 in 3 space real 3 space radius 1 centered at the origin so, so it is this you know it is this thing so this is this is the Riemann sphere and this point corresponds to the north pole which corresponds to so this infinity corresponds to the north pole okay. So your function is taking values on the Riemann sphere that is how you should think about it right and now uh, uh, what is it what is it that I am given I am given that uh, the I am given that the family uh, 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 I am given that the family uh, of, of spherical derivatives is normally uniformly bounded. So that means it is uniformly bounded on compact subsets of uh, D and uh, uh, this this uh, this closed disc uh, centered at Z0 radius rho is a compact subset of D. So it is so it is uniformly bounded on that okay uh, by by uh, by hypothesis uh, of normal uniform boundedness uh, of the family script F there exists an M uh, such that uh, uh, the spherical derivatives of uh, uh, all the spherical derivatives uh, in the family are bounded by m. So, uh, so let me just put in uh, mod z minus z not that's an equal. So I have this. Okay, this is just the uniform boundedness of the spherical derivatives restricted to this compact subset given by this disk, right? Now what do you do uh, uh, mind you that in this situation since the functions are taking values in the uh, extended complex plane okay on the target met the target metric space is the extended complex plane and the target metric is a spherical metric that is what you have to remember okay. The target metric space is the extended complex plane and on the extended complex plane the metric is the spherical metric it is actually the spherical distance on the. Uh, Riemann sphere transported by the homeomorphism of the Riemann sphere with the extended plane okay. So it is the so you should remember this is the big point to remember you have to remember that whenever you are working with values in the extended complex plane okay uh, the in the target space the extended complex plane the metric involved is the spherical metric okay. So uh, if you keep that in mind this is what is going to happen you see if I take two points. Uh, Suppose I take uh, so so let me use a different color. Uh, suppose I take uh, two points, say Z one and Z two, okay, uh, inside uh, this closed disk, and I take the straight line segment uh, from Z one to Z two, okay. Uh, then and suppose I call this segment as L, okay. Then uh, under if I if I if I take the image of the segment, the straight line segment under this map. Uh, f where f is any function uh, any meromorphic function in the collection of in the collection script f okay what I am going to get is I am going to get something on the I am uh, on the Riemann sphere I am going to get something okay. So it is going to be again uh, uh, it is going to be a contour uh, with uh, starting point f of uh, z1 and uh, uh, ending point f of z2 mind you know f of z1 and f of z2 are being thought of as points on the extended in the extended plane okay. And uh, the image contour the, the, the image contour is going to be just uh, f of l okay and what is the uh, uh, if you now now you know you can uh, uh, you know that from fz1 to fz2 on the ray on the Riemann sphere that is in the external complex plane the spherical distance is actually the uh, shortest distance on the on the on the sphere it is just the it is the minor arc of the greater circle passing through f of z1 and f of z2 on the on the sphere. Okay, and so what you can write is the distance, the spherical distance between f z one and f z two. This is certainly the, it is the shortest distance because it's the geodesic. Okay, uh, curves of shortest length on a surface are called geodesics. Okay, in general, if you have a space with a metric, uh, then the if you give me two points in the space, uh, it's not necessary that uh, the straight line distance, if it makes sense, is the shortest. Okay, there could be some other curves. Uh, depending on the metric especially 
you could you could have you could find the distance along a curve uh, to be smaller than the straight line distance in in some cases for example for spaces with negative curvature okay but in any case if you take a space where a metric is defined and uh, if you take two points in the space uh, uh, then the, sh the 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 shortest distance the curve of shortest distance from this point to that point on the space is called a geodesic and that is a geodesic distance on this on the sphere the geodesics are all given by the minor arcs of the, of arcs of the major circles okay so that is the spherical distance and this is certainly uh, this is the smallest distance and so this is certainly less than the 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 length uh, uh, this the spherical length so let me not abbreviate it uh, spherical length of uh, f of l okay certainly uh, and uh, well what is the spherical length of f of l you know how to get the formula for the spherical length this, the the formula the formula for the uh, if you give me a curve uh, on the plane uh, that is a contour on the plane then the length of the contour is just give, given by integrating mod dz okay where z is a variable you integrate mod dz from the initial point of the contour to the final point of the contour you get the length of the arc or contour on the plane but if you want to get the length of the image of the arc what you will have to do is you have to multiply by the factor which is given by the spherical derivative okay if you multiply the ordinary derivative and if it is an analytic function you will get the length of the image arc in the complex plane itself okay that is if you use modulus of the derivative of the analytic function as a scaling factor but if you use the spherical derivative as a scaling factor and you will take the spherical derivative corresponding to a meromorphic function then you will get the spherical length of the image of this arc on the Riemann sphere okay. Uh, so what is this this is going to be just integral from z1 to z2 of f hash of z mod dz this is the spherical length all right and what will happen is that you see now since you know now, now the point is that this integration is being carried out from z1 to z2 and of course this integration is over over uh, let me put l here because this integration is along the straight line path from z1 to z2 okay and that path lies inside this closed disk okay and on this closed disk the, all the spherical derivatives are all bounded by m. So you know uh, mind you the spherical length is always a non negative quantity okay it is a it is a positive it is a non negative real number okay. So what I will get is that this is this is certainly less than or equal to m times mod z1 minus z2 this is what I will get because I can replace this f hash of z by m because that m is an upper bound and the integral from z1 to z2 mod dz is just the uh, is just a st uh, along the straight line uh, segment is just the length of that segment that is the mod just mod z1 minus z2 okay. So I get this but now what is the advantage what is the advantage of this now I, uh, it tells me equi I have got equal continuity see uh, so uh, for uh, uh, for epsilon greater than 0 okay if we uh, if you if, uh, if we choose uh, 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 for epsilon greater than 0 if we choose delta to be uh, you know uh, epsilon by m okay then uh, uh, mod z minus uh, uh, mod z1 minus z2 uh, less than delta will imply that the spherical distance between fz1 and fz2 uh, is going to be less than epsilon I will get this inequality given epsilon greater than 0 whenever the distance between z1 and z2 is less than delta I can find a delta says that whenever distance between z1 and z2 is less than delta the, the spherical distance between fz1 and fz2 is less than epsilon and this works for all f in uh, the family script f so long as z1 and z2 lie in that closed disk. So what have I got I got equicontinuity I have got a kind of uniform equicontinuity you can think of this as either equicontinuity at z1 or thinking of z2 as a variable or you can think of equicontinuity at z2 thinking of z1 as a variable in any case it is a it is a uniform equicontinuity okay. So uh, so what I have got is that f uh, from uh, uh, d uh, uh, f from uh, this disk mod z minus z not less than or equal to rho uh, to uh, uh, the extended complex plane is unif is 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 equicontinuous and this uh, but then of course I can cover the source domain d uh, I can cover every point by such a closed disk lying in that domain therefore uh, I have got equicontinuity at every point so this implies that uh, so and this is equicontinuity for all f in script f 
So basically what I am saying is that f is this family script f is equicontinuous on d. So I get equicontinuity okay which is what which so basically what I have done is I have just shown that boundedness of the spherical derivatives gives me equicontinuity and that is a very general philosophy whenever you have boundedness of the derivative you integrate and you get equicontinuity that is a very general thing alright. Now uh, what I have to show uh, what do I have to show I have this I started with this I have this sequence here uh, in script f okay and I will have to extract a, a subsequence which converges uniformly on compact subsets that is what I have to do. What I want to indicate is that you can now do it exactly in the way you proved equicontinuity uh, and uniform boundedness implies uh, sequential compactness in uh, one way of the proof of the Arzeal Ascoli theorem okay. So what you do is uh, you do uh, uh, you, so these are the steps okay so what you do is uh, 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 we we retrace so oops we retrace uh, the uh, 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 the steps uh, in one way of the proof of the Arzelaskri theorem. Uh, to to extract uh, a normally convergent, so I'm using CGT for convergent as a as an abbreviation, uh, subsequence from the given sequence. Okay, so what do you do? Uh, so I'll 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 put it as a uh, a star list. Uh, uh, so the first thing is uh, find uh, a countable dense subset x one, x two, etc. So you given uh, given a start with a compact subset. k of d given a compact subset k of d first find a countable dense subset okay uh, the, here it is it is just the general statement that a compact metric space is separable okay then what you do is uh, now you have uh, uh, now go back and uh, think about the uh, the proof of the Arzel Ascoli theorem what you would do is that you would take the original sequence you will apply it to x1 okay and you apply it to x1 you get the you get all these uh, real or complex numbers okay and the now you will use the fact that the original sequence is uniformly bounded to say that you have a sequence of a bounded sequence and you will extract a subsequence okay. Any bounded sequence of real numbers or complex numbers uh, admits a subsequence a convergent subsequence that is all you are using. But now you see uh, look at the present situation if I apply f1, f2 if I apply this sequence to x1, uh, mind you, uh, let me let me let me change just change the notation to from x1, x2, if you want, to to z1, z2, because uh, all my points are actually my cam compact subset k is actually a point is a subset of d, and all my points are complex numbers. So I'll let me change it to z1, z2, and so on. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll apply uh, to z1. I'll apply the sequence. Okay, and I will get a convergent subsequence. Uh, I will get a convergence of sequence. Why is that? That is because if I apply f, uh, if I apply these functions, I am going to get a sequence of points on the Riemann sphere which is compact. Therefore, I, uh, it is sequentially compact. Therefore, every sequence gives me a convergence of sequence. You see? So, it works. That is the whole point. So, uh, apply, uh, uh, apply the sequence f1, f2 to z1 what will you get you get f1 of z1 f2 of z1 f3 of z1 on the on the on the Riemann sphere okay but uh, uh, but this is compact it is a compact matrix space so it so is sequentially compact.
and because of that what I can I, I what I will get I will get uh, a subsequence f uh, well uh, 1 1 f uh, f 1 2 f 1 3 uh, such that f 1 j of z 1 converges ok. So, this is the key step ok, this is the key point of difference when we were looking at real numbers or complex number when we were looking at real or complex valued functions ok when you applied the sequence to a point you got a you got a sequence a real sequence or a complex sequence but then you extracted a subsequence because you knew it is bounded and why where from did the boundedness come it came from the uniform boundedness of the original family ok but now you do not need any uniform boundedness in this case to extract a subsequence because the image the values are already being taken in the extended complex plane which is compact and it is already sequentially compact I do not need anything more to extract a convergent subsequence that is the big difference ok. Now what you do is now you iterate what you do is uh, apply to to z2 ok and uh, you get a subsequence a further subsequence uh, which is uh, f21 f22 f23 and so on such that if you take f 2 j z 2 this converges ok and you do this uh, do this ad infinitum what you will end up with is that you will end up with this matrix as usual. Uh, so, you, you you know uh, you you will get this uh, you, you will get this f you will get this matrix of uh, functions uh, uh, 1 3 and so on f 2 1 f 2 2 f 2 3 and so on f 3 1 f 3 2 f 3 3 and so on. So, it goes on like this and you know it is the diagonalization trick that we use what we do is that we extract this diagonal subsequence ok. Then what is the advantage of this diagonal subsequence this diagonal subsequence will give you a sequence which will converge at all points of this dense subset this countable dense subset of k ok. So, uh, f 1 1 so g 1 is equal to f 1 1 g 2 equal to f 2 2 g 3 equal to f 3 3 and so on is a subsequence that converges uh, uh, on the countable dense subset uh, z 1 z 2 of k ok all right and now what you do is uh, I, I want to repeat those steps now you use uh, 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 we have just now proved that all the functions in the in the in this family are equicontinuous ok we will we have just now proved that. So, just use equicontinuity and uh, on uh, on this sequence of functions to cook up uh, uh, to show that this sequence is actually Cauchy on the whole space ok and therefore, it is convergent ok. So, uh, so the moral of the story is that uh, at this point you use uh, you use the equicontinuity of the family and mind you that equicontinuity came from the boundedness of the spherical derivatives that is that is what you have to remember ok. So, use uh, so use uh, the equicontinuity of uh, uh, use the equicontinuity of uh, this as a family script f to get uh, uh, to show that to show that uh, g 1 g 2 etcetera is convergent uh, on uh, all of all of k ok. So, this is exactly as we did in the Arzela proof the Arzela Ascoli theorem I am not going to repeat it ok. Now, so what have we succeeded uh, using uh, uh, what we have succeeded is given any compact subset of D I given a sequence given any compact subset I am able to extract a uh, 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 uniformly convergent subsequence ok. But then what do I need I need one 
uh, if I change the compact subset okay my uh, subsequence could change but I want one global subsequence which works on every compact subset and how do you get that you again get by another diagonalization arg argument uh, what you do is you fill up D by a sequence of increasing compact sets okay with the property that uh, any compact subset is contained in one of one set of this sequence okay and then use again a diagonalization argument as we use in the proof of no Montel's theorem to extract from this a global subsequence which is going to be convergent uniformly on every compact subset and that finishes uh, the, the proof in one, in one, one way of proof of Marty's theorem that boundedness of spherical derivatives implies uh, the family is uh, sequen normally sequentially compact or compact okay boundedness of the derivatives on, uh, on, on, on compact subsets. So normal boundedness of the derivatives implies normal sequential compactness. So let me write that very quickly uh, uh, as in the proof proof uh, of Montel's theorem fill out D by uh, an increasing sequence sequence of compact subsets. and use a diagonalization argument to extract a global subsequence that converges uniformly on every compact subset of So this proves one way. What is the other way? You have to show that if you have a normal family, you will have to show that it is uh, the spherical derivatives are bounded. And the other way is proved by contradiction. If the spherical derivatives are not bounded, okay, then I can extract a sequence. I can I can find a compact set and a sequence of functions and a sequence of points at which the spherical derivatives are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. Now from this sequence of functions because I have assumed normal sequential compactness I can also get a subsequence which converges okay. If the functions if a you know if a family of functions uh, converge uh, meromorphic functions converges to a limit function then the family of spherical derivatives also will also converge okay. But mind you the spherical derivative of any function is always a finite quantity the spherical derivative of any function meromorphic function is only a finite quantity even if you take the function which is uniformly infinity spherical derivative is 0 okay you will only get a finite quantity. So if the sequence of functions converges to a function uh, then the sequence of, sequence of spherical derivatives converges to the spherical derivative of the limit function and that is a finite quantity but on the other hand the original sequence had uh, points uh, where uh, the values were becoming larger and larger so that is a contradiction. So that contradiction will prove that you know if you assume that the uh, family is normally sequentially compact the spherical derivatives have to be uh, normally uniformly bounded that is the other way of the proof of Marty's theorem okay and with that we, we are through with the proof of Marty's theorem.